Hello, Ethan. Thank you so much for tuning in to Y254 TV. The, the, it's the 23rd of March 2021. I trust you have been well. Glad you could be part of us this Tuesday. A very good evening to you. My name is Dereva Hillary. Welcome to the broadcast. We begin from the education sector. Our education cabinet secretary, Professor George Magua, has urged all stakeholders involved in the ongoing KCP examination not to lower their guard. Professor Magua, who was speaking in Machakos Town when he witnessed the opening of the examination container in Machakos Town, urged education officials and the provincial administration to work together to ensure the success of the examination exercises. Magoa expressed concerns over the lack of enough police officers to guard examination centers and told police commanders across the country to ensure every center gets two policemen. He also added that the government through the education ministry had set aside funds to cater for the security personnel manning all schools. The education series was accompanied by top security and education officials in Machakos County, led by Machakos County Commissioner Frederick Ndunga and County Education Director Shamsa Muhammad. When I opened on time, uh, uh, the teachers were all here. Like this morning, they are carrying two exams, one for morning, one for late morning. So as one exam is being done, that the policy framework in order for us to maintain the integrity of these examinations has been for the past four years and this being the fifth year that each center manager must have two officers one of the officers sits throughout with the examination wherever the examination is ushirikiano wa kila moja Tuweze kuendesha mitiani yetu kwa njia nzuri, kwa njia ya amani, tupatia wanafunzi candidates tuwapatie nafasi nzuri ya kufanya mitiani yao vizuri. Our coordinators in NEC who are receiving information from all over the country that in case there is a challenge is being brought to us and we are able to address it in a very seamless manner. All of them are below 18. Let's all support them. Let's be their mentor. A mentor, you don't have to meet some, talk to somebody. They can just see you, what you do, and they want to follow you. And we coach and become role models. They will be the future. So we people. need to ensure we protect them and ensure that whatever they are doing is being done in a very conducive environment. We have been able to deploy our security mechanism and apparatus, both monitoring and the physical, so that we make sure that every part of this region, every centre, is well secured and i can assure you from where we sit up to this moment we have no security challenges and we are going to make sure during the exam period even as we start the kcse from thursday up to the next three to four weeks we will make sure that we deploy we deploy adequately and we make sure that uh, the exam is well secured in other news, Busia County government has installed 15 million shillings oxygen manufacturing plant at the Busia Referral Hospital. The plant funded by the World Bank through the Kenya Devolution Support Program was commissioned by Busia Governor Sospita Ojamwang. The project is aimed at saving the lives of patients undergoing major surgeries, whose, those with breathing difficulties and those in the intensive care unit in need of oxygen. This comes after the county government announced plans to upgrade seven health facilities to offer services to the residents. Chief Officer Medical Services Dr. Isaac Komeri said health centers including Amukura, Matayos and Bumula B will be elevated to sub-county hospitals while Malaba or Bekai, Kayo and Budalangi dispensaries will be upgraded to health centers. Elsewhere, still, uh, members of the disciplined forces have been encouraged to seek divine nourishment and psychosocial support to avoid trauma that has led many to commit suicide or, or killing fellow officers. Speakers at St. Anthony's Catholic Church in Malindi Town during the annual interdominational Thanksgiving Mass for Disciplined Uniformed Services said they were distressed by the recent trends in which officers had either committed suicide or fatally attacked others 
due to work-related trauma. Commissioner of Police Violet Mahanu from the Directorate of Criminal Investigations DCI headquarters said the rate of, at which officers were committing suicide or killing one another was alarming. She urged senior officers to develop a listening heart to the to their juniors in order to reduce the stress that could lead to dangerous tendencies. Kim Bingo Moturi, a commissioner of police based at the office of the Inspector General of Police, said the vigilance house was aware of the problem affecting officers and the police services had deployed police chaplains and counselors to give them psychosocial support. Moturi said the government was fully committed to the welfare of police officers and was passionate about supporting them. Senior officers, let us have a listening heart to our officers. Wakati officer wadogo wanakuja kwako, jaribu uwasikize, wapatie nafasi, uwasikize, ujue shida iko wapi. Kabla officer, ajafika mahali ya kufikiria kufanya kitendo kibaya. Staying on matters mental health, residents of Marewa village in Muranga, East Sub County, woke up to road shock after Mhuman and her lover were found dead in their house. The body of a 37 year old Teresia Mumbi was found laying on bed as the as that of a lover, Francis Mwangi, was found in the sitting room hanging from the roof. Residents alleged that the man, Francis Mwangi, killed Mumbi before committing suicide. Local residents claimed that they have been having domestic indifferences for a while, saying the hostility could have led to the murder. Area Chief Bernard Kagoto appealed to people, especially those who live together, to seek alternative ways of solving differences instead of opting to murder. Tulikuja, tukapata damu kwa mulango, wakati tulikuta damu, tukaangalia kwa gate, tukakuta hata kwa gate kuna damu. Alafu tukaenda kwa dirisha, ndiyo tulikuta huyo mama melala. Hawa kuwa wakishi vizuri kwa sababu walikuwa na vita hapa na pale kidogo kidogo, kwa sababu walikuwa wakitumia pombe. Acute water shortage for the last three months in Mwingi has led residents to unprecedented suffering. The residents are now urging the county government to step in and ensure Mwingi has sufficient water. The situation has prompted the residents to camp at water kiosks which have remained closed for days, leading to an increase in the price of a 20-litre jerry can from 2 shillings to 50 shillings. Maliti Mengia Water Wed in Mwingi Town said his business has been adversely affected where the hiked water price has made many customers to shy off uh, of 50 shillings since it's too much to afford. Mary Molandi, another local added that doing chores has been a challenge as our children skip days without taking a shower and sometimes lack water to cook. With that story from Wingy Town, we'll be taking a very short break. When we'll be coming back, we'll have more stories for you, including a CBK story where they have announced expiry of restructuring of loans. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Stay with us. We appreciate your company this far. And if you just tuned in, this is OI254. You're watching the business Tuesday. Uh, on business sector, the Central Bank of Kenya, CBK, has announced the expiry of measures of restructuring of loans for banks borrowers following the lapse of the one-year allotment as part of the emergency measures to mitigate on the adverse economic effects of banks borrowers and Amid, amid coronavirus pandemic, Central Bank of Kenya announced a set of measures including providing relief to borrowers on their personal loans based on the individual circumstances arising from the pandemic as well as banks to review requests from borrowers for extension of their loan for a period of up to one year. The measures lapsed beginning of this month.
National Carrier Kenya Airways has announced that its losses nearly tripled in 2020 to stand at 36 billion shillings compared to 13 billion shillings in 2019. The National Carrier has attributed the loss to, among others, the collapse of its operations across 2020 on the back of COVID-19 related disruptions. According to CEO Alan Kilavuka, Kenya Airways passengers dropped significantly during the year under review to 1.8 million compared to 5.2 million in 2019, hitting hard on its revenue income. The airline's revenue was also down by 60% to stand at 52 billion shillings in the period under review. The airline's operating expenses were also down by 38.5% to stand at 79.3 billion shillings from 130 billion shillings in 2019. The airline's operating expenses were also down by 38.5%. Alan Kilavuka has, however, pegged recovery of the sector to other factors such as the uptake of cargo services and the rollout of the vaccines. And away from Kenya, Israel has gone to the polls for the for the election in less than two years, with the, with the nation still divided over whether Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu deserves to remain in office. Voters are casting their ballots in polling stations across Israel and in the occupied West Bank with some 6.5 million registered to vote. The general consensus among pollsters, analysts and voters is that the status quo will remain in the election. Netanyahu has portrayed himself as a global statesman uniquely qualified to lead the country through its many security and diplomatic challenges. He has made Israel's coronavirus vaccination campaign the centerpiece of his re-election bid and pointed to last year's diplomatic agreements with four Arab states. However, opponents accuse Netanyahu of bungling the management of the coronavirus pandemic for most of the past year. And in Australia, authorities in eastern Australia have issued fresh flood warnings and evacuation orders amid relentless week-long downpour as emergency services deployed helicopters and boats to rescue residents stranded by flood waters. In New South Wales, the worst affected state, a fourth consecutive day of heavy rain today was expected to increase the deluge over the coming 24 hours. Flood and severe weather warnings were extended to areas not previously affected including the south coast of Sydney, Australia's largest city and areas of the northwest which were recently crippled by a prolonged drought. So far, no fatalities or serious injuries, injuries have been reported, but thousands of homes and businesses are believed to have been damaged. About 18,000 people have been evacuated. And coming closer back home on health matters, Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital is in the process of establishing 30 new ICU beds in the facility following an upsurge in COVID-19 cases in the country over the past few weeks. Hospital Board Chair Professor Olive Mogende said the 32 ICU beds that the hospital has are currently full with COVID-19 patients. Professor Mugenda, who was speaking after inspecting the infrastructural preparedness of Gatundu Level 5 Hospital that they will soon take over in management, said the new beds will be available in the next three days. She said the demand for ICU beds in the facility has increased since the third way we have hit the country this month, forcing them to add more. The hospital's is regarded among the few better placed to handle COVID-19 cases in the country. Right now, we actually are full, ICU is full, but uh, this week we are opening another 30 bed ICU. So I can see in another maybe three, four days, we'll, we'll be having more, you know, more beds. But as we talk now, it's full. That is why we decided what do we do to increase those beds. So we are working hard on that. It will be a 30 bed uh, ICU which I can confirm it will be ready by the end of this week. For now. I see right now we have 24 plus 8, that is 32 uh, beds. And as I said, those are full. But that is why we decided to open up another 30, 30 bed. Already we have sent um, 11 nurses here from the hospital. We have sent seven doctors. 
just to improve the service and we'll continue uh, working with the county to make sure that this hospital is, is really to the standard uh, of our hospital at, uh, at KU Hospital. We are also collaborating on capacity building. We are going to be training uh, the personnel in this hospital as we train others so they can be at the same level. We are also going, as the governor has said, to collaborate on the referral system just so that uh, people who have complications they can come to our hospital. So we are very happy about the collaboration. I would like to assure the people of Gatudo specifically and Kiabu in general that this hospital will remain a level five hospital so that it can serve the people of Gatudo. However, the services, we are improving to be at the level six level. But in terms of access to the healthcare, it will be here just as before. Staying on matters COVID-19 in Kenya today, 1,127 people tested positive for COVID-19 from a sample size of 5,393 tested in the last 24 hours, bringing the cumulative number of confirmed cases in the country to 123,167. Cumulatively so far, the country has tested or has conducted 1,425,000 one million four hundred and twenty five thousand three hundred and seventy seven two hundred and ten patients have recovered from the disease with one hundred and ten from home based and isolation care while one hundred are from various health facilities total recoveries now stands at ninety thousand five hundred and eighty six uh, sadly, 25 people have died due to COVID-19 in the last 24 hours Cumulatively, fatalities in the country stands at 2,048. Two Condolences to the families and friends of those who have lost their loved ones. Now, 1,090 patients are currently admitted in various health facilities countrywide, while 3,224 patients are on home-based isolation and care. 135 patients are in the ICU, 34 of whom are on ventilatory support and 93 on supplementary oxygen. Eight patients are on observation. 55 patients are separately on supplementary oxygen with 42 of them in the general wards and 13 in the high dependency units. And that story marks the end of our broadcast and I thank you so much for staying with us. See you again tomorrow, same time, same place. Until then, enjoy the rest of our programming and have yourself a very good night. My name is Dereva Hilary.